Hello, my name's Lindsay, and I'm going to be telling you today's story. But before we do that, let's have a song. So, can you remember who we've been hearing about? It's Elijah, isn't it? And Elijah was a prophet of God. That means God used him to tell people what he wanted them to know. So, when Elijah spoke, he was speaking God's words to the people. Can you remember what happened last week? It's quite exciting, wasn't it? Elijah had to stand alone against the king and the queen and the people and those prophets of Baal, the prophets of the false god, they were all against him and Elijah stood by himself. He had to be very brave to do that, didn't he? And can you remember what test they had? They were going to call down fire from heaven and whoever could do that would be the one true God. And do you remember all day long, those false prophets tried to call down fire from heaven, but they failed because they, they, that, they weren't following a true God, were they? But when Elijah prayed, immediately there was fire from heaven and the sacrifice was burnt up. I think Elijah must have been so excited about that. Maybe he thought to himself, now at last people will see that there's only one true God in heaven and he's the one they should be following. And maybe he thought the king and queen will change their mind now and they'll follow the one true God as well. But he was going to be disappointed because in today's story we hear that as soon as the queen heard what had happened, she was really angry and she said, I want that Elijah dead. I don't want him to live any longer. I'm going to make sure he dies. When Elijah heard that, he was frightened. He'd been so brave, hadn't he, before, but now when he heard that the Queen wanted to kill him, he ran away. And he kept running and running as far as he could to get away from the Queen. 
What happens when you run for a long time? You start to feel very tired, don't you? And you need food and you need water. Elijah didn't have any of those things. And so eventually his strength ran out. He was in the desert. He found a tree and in its shade, he just lay down and he prayed to God. He said, Heavenly God, will you take my life now? I just want to die. I've done everything I can, but these people won't change their mind. They won't see that you're the one true God. Do you think God heard his prayer? Well, the Bible tells us God always hears us when we pray. Do you think God answered his prayer? Well, not in the way that Elijah asked for. And that's sometimes true. We can pray for things and God doesn't give us the answer that we want. Sometimes he says, I've got a better plan for you. And he had a better plan for Elijah. God has always got a good plan for us. And so as Elijah slept, God sent an angel to him. He brought some food and some water for him. And the angel woke him up and said, Elijah, eat, drink. You need to keep your strength up. And that's what Elijah did. He had a bit more sleep, a bit more food, and then he was ready to go on his journey again. God had wonderfully heard his prayer and answered in a way that he hadn't expected. And so now Elijah kept going on his journey. He was still trying to escape from the queen. The Bible tells us that he walked for 40 days and 40 nights into the desert until at last he came to a cave. And he went into that cave and he sat down and there he had a wonderful experience of God. God spoke to him and said to him, Elijah, what are you doing? Now, God knew what he was doing, didn't he? Because God knows everything about us. But he wanted Elijah to talk to him and he wanted to show Elijah some wonderful things. And Elijah said, I've worked so hard. I've had to be so brave. I had to stand against all those people. And yet it didn't make any difference. I'm the only one who's following you. I'm the only one who's serving you. And God had to show him something wonderful that was going, that, about what he was thinking. He, he, God said to Elijah, stand at the mouth of the cave and see what happens. So Elijah stood there at the mouth of the cave. And as he stood there, a great wind came rushing past, whoosh, with a really loud noise whooshed past the mouth of the cave and made such a noise but God wasn't in that in that wind and then there was an earthquake do you know what an earthquake is it's when the ground shakes and the rocks break and buildings fall and Elijah could feel the earthquake under his feet but he knew that God wasn't in that earthquake and then he saw a fire a burning hot fire but he knew that God wasn't in that fire. God wasn't in those spectacular, amazing things like that. Instead, God spoke to him in a still, small voice. And Elijah knew that it was God speaking to him. God said to him, Elijah, you're not alone. I've still got people in this, in this land that are serving me. I've got 7,000 people. Who are, still, who are still worshipping me and serving me and haven't worshipped that false God. And Elijah, I've still got work for you to do. I need you to find a new king for this country and I've got someone who's going to help you. He's going to be your friend and help you to do all the things that I've asked you to do. And when you're gone, he'll carry on the work after you. And his name is Elisha. And he's waiting for you now. So you need to go and find him. Isn't that wonderful? God had seen how sad and miserable Elijah was. And he'd spoken to him in a quiet voice and showed him that he'd got a plan for him. That all the work he'd done wasn't for nothing. It was all part of God's plan. So what can we learn from that story? Well, we can see that when we pray to God, he always hears us, no matter where we are, or what we're doing, or how we feel. Elijah felt so sad and miserable when he prayed, 
But God heard him and he understood and he sent some and he sent some help and, and he sent some food and water when he needed it. God is able to help us when we feel sad and miserable as well. We need to tell him how we feel. He understands how we feel. And God still had a plan for Elijah and he's got a plan for us. And it's always a good plan. It's always the best plan. So we need to be following him, to be trusting him, to be trusting in the Lord Jesus. That's what God's good plan for us is, to believe and trust in the Lord Jesus. And he's promised to hear our prayers and to help us when we pray to him. So we're going to pray to him now. So we're going to put our arms out like this. We're going to fold our arms and close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your plans for us are good plans if we love and trust the Lord Jesus. And we thank you that you hear us when we pray. And no matter if we're sad or miserable or upset or worried, you hear our prayers and you're able to help us and to answer our prayers, sometimes in ways that might be very surprising. So help us to love and trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you for listening. Hi everyone, it's Liz and I've come to tell you about a really exciting afternoon that we're all planning for you at the church. So on Friday the 29th of October at half past two, you need to come to the church with your grown-up. There will be some activities and games and then we'll have a short service where Daniel, our new minister, will give you a short message and we will sing some songs from the online holiday bible club also there will be a prize giving for everybody who took part in holiday bible club now at the end of the afternoon i'm hearing some exciting news that we're going to have some hot dogs so make sure you tell your grown-up about this and put it in your diary and we look forward to seeing you on friday the 29th of october at half past two at the church goodbye everyone have a lovely week Bye-bye.